Hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a first-person replay commentary. Um, I am in a room full of Dota players right now, so you guys are going to hear some background noise. But just accept it. Most of them have headsets on, so they can't hear me, hopefully. All right. Um, this is a Chen game that I played yesterday. Sorry for the late upload, by the way, if any of you guys are still awake in the U.S. Um, I'm sure most of the European people are asleep, but unfortunately, when I woke up this morning, they were still casting, and then we went out to go see a movie, and I just got back. So, finally recording. Sorry it's late, uh, but I'll probably get another uh, another video up tomorrow anyway. So, I don't know what yet. Uh, I've been playing a lot of games recently, but haven't had a whole bunch of really good stuff. So, we'll see how that turns out. Um, anyways, uh, one disadvantage to doing a Chen video for... Um, for a uh, replay commentary is that it doesn't show control groups as well so it doesn't show like as I it doesn't like change the icons as I switch to a creep instead of my hero so you'll have to just uh, you'll just have to understand what I did I guess but I'll, I'll explain those things as they happen so I ended up randoming so I got Chen I actually like Chen a lot um, uh, I think he's he's a very good hero and I think I'm okay-ish at him my micro needs a lot of work obviously but I think my decision making is okay-ish for the average pub player. Most players don't actually play Chen very much, so it often will lead them into a bad area. I don't know why Chen is not an option yet. Apparently it took forever to choose my hero or something. Come on, Chen. There we go. Alright, so I random, which means I get to buy all the support items. So I buy a courier, I buy a centaur to make sure that they don't block the camps. And um, usually you can get at least one smoke for ganking and then... Uh, Probably two clarity potions to make sure that you have mana. But honestly, you can go to lane with Chen with absolutely no items at all. It's not that big of a deal. So this is actually a little overspending. But essentially, I grab two ironwood branches because I anticipate making a mech at some point. So it's not horrible to buy these. At least one tango in case I take harass or something like that. And then a century ward to guarantee that I can jungle. You can easily get by with literally zero items in the jungle. The downside is that you'll either have to pick up arcane boots in lane. Or you'll have to go back to base at some point to get mana. So by picking up uh, two clarity potions, it pretty much ensures that I do have enough mana to continue to jungle and sometimes gank. So priority number one this game, um, Chen in a, in a covering a dual lane in the jungle essentially makes a pretty strong trial lane in the sense that you should be able to beat offensive dual lanes and things like that. It's it's not too hard to beat them. So uh, the main reason that it's honestly really good is because um, any neutral creep is approximately as good as other level 1 heroes. You have about the same movement speed, and they all have a nuke, basically. So I'm just going to hang on this spot until 30 seconds, and then I'm going to start jungling from the main large camp. Uh, looks like we have a mid invoker, and our safe trial lane is a... It's a Phantom Lancer with a silencer, actually, which is kind of a weird dual lane. It's not a very good dual lane, actually. But um, we should be able to get some ganks off, at least. We have, it looks like we have an off lane Timber Saw again, so... 30 seconds of creeps will spawn, and now I'm going to take control of the big one, and then... Uh, Hopefully kill some. So, things that you won't be able to see, I it won't show me ever selecting anybody other than Chen. So, it's, a, it's just like a, a feature of the replay thing, unfortunately. So, player perspective won't show me controlling my creeps. But, just to explain what I do for micro, I even had some people ask me tweets about this in the last day or two. Um, I forgot to spawn skeletons, by the way, I should have spawned skeletons, so slight mistake there. And usually it's kind of good to stack the small camp before you kill it, if you can kill it before 30 seconds, but the Dark Troll doesn't kill as fast as things like the, uh, maybe the Ursa or something like that. So, things to point out, uh, whenever I'm microing, I, I always hotkey my other units to two, always. So that means I, as soon as I select them, I select just them and I press control too. If you guys don't know any other fancy hotkey things that I picked up from RTS, if I want to add something to that control group, I can select the Dark Troll and I can select the Skeleton or whatever else that I want to control. And you hold shift and press 2 again. So it'll add onto the control group whatever you have already selected. So if I want to just... If I summon another creep, for example, then I can I can pick that up pretty easily. I snag the um, the satyr instead because the dark troll isn't very good for harassing in the early lane, and I'm trying to help out our trial lane right now. I wanted to make sure that I hit at least level two, and I'm gonna send the satyr over here to nuke. Um, if I actually would have shifted early, okay, I guess they still got the kill anyways. But would have been maybe nice if I shifted over earlier. This is actually a really annoying dual lane, so what my plan was to uh, basically to try to harass them a bit more. I don't want them to get a free easy lane essentially, so. That does 125 magic damage, you can do up to 6 because of a 600 one. mana pool. And it should help contest that lane a bit and make sure that the PL gets some farm. Now this is going to cost me, in terms of my, myself getting solo EXP and things like that, 
but um, I mean, I do 93 damage to two heroes. That's really useful, and it it only costs me time essentially because I can't really jungle as a result. So it does hurt me, but I think it's useful to try to contest any undying dual lane. Like th they're the most annoying lanes, especially with a Visigen as well. Just a really really strong dual lane that's gonna be a pain in the butt to deal. With, so so I pick up the creep because I didn't think anyone was gonna get that and might get denied. So in the meantime, I'll bring the Seder back because they are kind of plain scared. And I'll go back to jungling, so. The Seder's actually really good, I think, in the early game, um, just because nuke damage is pretty rare. Um, at least that a lot of people don't have a lot of nuke damage, so picking it up on one creep is pretty useful. So I'll go back to jungling now. If that lane wasn't contested, usually what I would end up doing is stacking a camp or two. I'd be looking for a wildkin, because the wildkin can tornado AoE large groups of creeps, and then I would go for a smoke gank or just a gank on a side lane, or the mid lane, you never really know. Uh, but get, getting ganks off is really important. So I could snag the wildkin over here for uh, some extra survivability, or tornadoing is what I meant to say. I'm just going to nuke this here, and I misclicked. I was so mad about this. I accidentally took control of the small creep instead of the big creep, and that's not the only time I did that this game, so be prepared for that. Um, should have scrolled my, my camera up a little bit more. I, I was clicking on the big creep, but um, according to the client, it was not. It's like the tree thing. If you don't have your camera straight above, then it's kind of hard to see. It looks like they actually blocked the camp. Um, you can see the ward over there, actually, over on the right side. But um, it doesn't actually block the camp because it needs to be on the magic push. They actually placed it the wrong spot. There's no point to place it on that ward if you're not going to magic push it, I think. Unless you're trying to like ninja pretend like you haven't done magic push. So Sansa got Undying, looks like Phantom Lancer is not going to be able to get the other one. I did see that that camp wasn't blocked, or was blocked, excuse me, so I was like, why isn't that camp not there? The camp should be there. Which means that I should deward it, I believe. I decided to be annoying again, because they're still contesting the lane, so I figured this is more important than me getting farmed, basically. I might as well contest them, and it's going to cost me some survivability, but at least I'm going to be able to get um, my PL more farm. But... I'm kind of micro-reading the tornado. Um, I, I I don't always hotkey this, but sometimes what I used to do is I would like accidentally click two and then cancel. I would use cause the wildkin to move, which would cause me to lose survivability. I think I was actually yeah. I'm towards the mid lane right now. I'm just like basically micro-reading a tornado and doing nothing else. But I probably instead should have considered coming in for a gank here. Like if I was actually in position around the corner, I could have shown up and just dropped the test of faith and maybe killed somebody. Test of faith being a pretty decent nuke, 100 to 200 pure damage somewhere in there, and that is pure damage, so it's higher than. The average. So pretty good pickup with the Sunstrike. And I should be able to bring the, the Wildkin back in jungle a bit more. So we got another kill on the the dual offlane. It's so important that you shut those down because dual offlanes can do so much, especially with an Undying as well as a, uh, a Visage. So I saw for sure that the camp was blocked, so I figured it, the ward was right on top of it, so I was right. I put one over there. I didn't end up finding the pull spot. I don't think any pulling actually happened this game because of the fact that uh, the lane was constantly contested, but I'm going to sacrifice the wildkin on the medium creep, and as soon as the medium creep is dead, I'll, I'll take the large wildkin, most likely. Just to save some HP, basically. I assume I take the Seder at least. Yep. With only one level of Holy Persuasion, you can actually only control one creep. You can't uh, control multiples. Um, this is a pretty common skill build, though. They actually end up coming to gank for me, so a slight mistake for me, but... I do have the Seder with me though, I should be able to get a couple nukes off before I die. This is the part where, okay good, I did hit both of them. So now I'm going to start buying some items, because I expect to die. I really should have tested a faith before I die, but I didn't. I'm going to start killing some zombies as well for gold. Just got 15 gold, guys. It's like 20 gold. Go with a DD is actually pretty good. He's gonna kill my Seder for 100 gold, so I tr definitely try not to sacrifice or lose your 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 dudes if possible, because everyone that dies is is the same. It's a neutral creep that's dying for your opponents. I don't quite know if this guy's gonna die. Oh yeah, wow, that's just faith in a lot of damage. So I'm a bit behind in EXP compared to where you'd normally be with a Chen. It's one of the downsides of the Chen is it's harder to contest a dual offlane like that. If I was playing Enchantress, for example, you can just run through the jungle and take a creep and go send it out its way to do something. But for Chen, you need at least one creep to help you jungle to tank or do nukes. So it's pretty important, unfortunately, in normal circumstances. 
You can kill small camps really fast with the uh, the Ursa Clappers. I actually really like the Ursa Clappers myself. What? What? What happened? And while you're bored doing stuff, and by that I mean auto attack, you can just watch your other lanes. It's pretty fun. So level four now. This gives more HP to my Holy Persuasion, to my creeps. Once you hit five, you can control. control you can control two creeps, and at level um, seven, when you have the fourth level Holy Persuasion, you can control three, and that's when Chen gets really fun. And that you can micro a lot of stuff at the same time. So I decided to grab a centaur because I wanted to uh, po probably gank with it. And the clapper creeps. I, I don't remember if that was on a mana or not, but I think it was pretty low. And that'll just pop a clarity potion to make sure my mana's full and I'll continue Missing to jungle. Middle. Probably go for a gank pretty soon here. I don't want to lose all of my centaur's HP um, before I gank, so I decided to shift over. Just spotted a visage. Really don't know why I put a sentry down there. Middle tower is under attack. We knew for sure that we wanted to try to get a kill, so I'm gonna try to run. I'm gonna run my centaur around. I want to get it behind the uh, the undying. And now I'm gonna kill zombies. Zombie gold's best gold, guys. Again, I don't want my centaur to die, so I'm just gonna run it away, most likely, and then go pick up some new creeps. I'm actually almost level five, so. I could keep this alive, maybe. If I kill any creep, I'll hit level 5. I can send the centaur home. I'll keep a centaur. Missing bottom. Or I could just sacrifice it. Oops. Alright, looks like I just gave up on life. That's fine. Probably should have waited to kill at least one creep, I think. I don't know if I was looking at my experience there or not, but... That and this is now on cooldown for a while, so if I would have saved, I guess I would have had to send it all the way back. Go see if I can help out. But a little five and mud golems, of course, so I'm gonna get screwed there. And the other ones, the other ones are ogres. I guess I could go into the other large camp. Basically, the two large camps are the the best ones. Medium camp sometimes has creeps that you need, but not always. Missing bottom. <sighs> I, I uh, unfortunately stopped moving for a second there, so I look pretty dead. Don't remember if I... Yeah, I didn't even nuke before I died again. So, a second death for me. I probably should have gotten wards up number one, but most importantly, um, I should just stop moving. That's what happens sometimes near my green. Um, blocking with my creeps also would have been really nice, but I should have just kept vision on the, uh, the other lanes, just anticipating this. So unfor unfortunately for me, I'm not level 6 yet. If I had, uh, Earth level 7, if I had more creeps, I could probably contest that a lot better. Missing bottom. It is good that PL's getting the kills at least, so I'm doing some damage. It's the first Chen game that I played in a long time, by the way, so... It's definitely a little rusty here. I'm sure I could play this here a lot better if I practice. Middle tower is under attack. And some pre soul EXP in the mid lane, so I'm gonna go sit mid for a bit. Troll Warlord having a good time top. And I can go back in the jungle and get a second creep finally, so. Pretty excited about this moment. Been waiting so long to grab a new creep. I'll just use that to jungle for now, and then uh, I can do this as well. Basically, just kind of wanted to do this within EXP of each other, so they could finish each respective camp, and then I should be able to go gank with these. And now that I'm six, I need to watch my allies a bit more. Like peels in trouble on the bot lane. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, it makes sense. So what I tried to do there is I tried to block them in by putting one creep 
hold position on the right side and one creep hold position on the left side. And um, I told I did it like a shift command, so I told the satyr to go in position and hold position so that he was blocked inside and it would die 100%. But the problem was he got a little higher, like the place that I clicked was slightly below where the visage got to before he escaped basically. So the creep was a little late, so when he tried to get in a position and the visage blocked him, it registered as, I can't walk here, so I need to go the only path which is around, which is why he backed out. So. Small mistake for me. I could have walked in myself actually and just walked in and blocked it. So, slight miss micro there and I ended up uh, losing me a kill. So, a little unfortunate. I'm about to hit level 7. I believe this is my mech that I'm going to be picking up here. Dyer's bottom and uh, tower is under if I hit level 7, I can control 3 creeps. But unfortunately, that guy didn't do it for me. So, I decided to go somewhere else to kill a creep. And then I was going to kill a creep and come back at the centaur, but then I realized mid's being pushed. I need to go defend mid. I was definitely very active this game. A lot more than I kind of wanted to be, but. Should be able to get these in and maybe... I was able to deny the tower though. I was really late in my mech there. So, late mech. I did deny the tower. I got some disables off and now I'm farming zombies which is wonderful. Always farm zombies guys. I probably should have, I don't know if I had the Seder nuke or not, but it's very overwhelming playing Chen. It looks really bad, like this, I promise, but getting your heroes to do, or your creeps to do all this stuff is really tough. Got some pure damage. Cool, so we got all the bats. Really good for us. Heal on the creep, so I'm level 7, so I can pick up another one now. Let's see what I snag. I don't remember. Oh, it's gonna be another clapper. So, again, I hotkey all the new creeps to the 2 hotkey, and then I can cycle between the two if I really want to. And now that I have three, I can definitely push with my allies. Um, I wish I had arcane boots. Having arcane boots is really nice. Just because it guarantees you that you don't have any mana problems on Chen. You should have enough to be able to cast. The expensive one is really, honestly, the uh, the send back, the test of faith. 200 mana for this is really costly. Even casting the offensive one is quite a bit as well. But I actually really like those these creeps early on. The, their disable is horrible in comparison to something like troll nets or centaur stunners, but... The double clappers, as well as the Seder, are great for just nuking creep waves, and you can farm a lot faster with them, basically. Sound sounds a little messed up, but for some reason. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Those poor little creeps, guys. Alright, so I got level 8. I have almost got arcane boots. I have a mech picked up as well. I've got three creeps. I don't really need to be any more Dyer's level than this. Uh, farming past this attack. point is, is too much. Um, unless there's nothing to do, in which case, go farm, obviously. Um, I'll go pick up another creep wave here. And I should have arcanes. I probably should use my arcanes on my creeps. I believe my creeps are actually pretty low on mana at this point. But I used it just on the uh, the PL for some reason. That was a mistake. I think they're all pretty low, actually. Again, you can't see it because of the player perspective, unfortunately. So, for now, we'll go back in jungle more. Um, the Ursa or the Hellbear Smashers have 300 mana. They can cast Clap three times. And the uh, again, the Seder has 600 mana, and they cost 100 apiece, so you can cast six times. So, Both of them are actually very good for, for nuking creep waves. And I know that they're pushing in, so I'm going to spread these out a little bit so that I have some vision on my opponents. Um, I want to go hide over here, because me being around places isn't really that important. But I decided to hold position in this so that they can't get through. I'll block them from coming through. And then they ended up uh, tombstoning it anyway, so... Top tower is under attack. 
I right click my creeps on the tombstone. So we killed a bunch of them. I lost one creep in the in the matter, but worked out okay. There's the other time that I grabbed a crappy creep. Fight little wolf. Don't stop. Poor little wolf. He's destined to die. God, is he really level 15? Holy crap. Oh, he's gotten 5 kills and 6 assists. So that's good. I mean, I've died a couple times, but I have assisted a lot in getting kills and it's more important than anything else. And I have a centaur, so I finally have a hard disable. And I got smokes and TP. Smokes are really good on Chen because you have so many creeps that are kind of hard to get places. They're really slow, actually. This is the point where I realized the Seder was slower than everything else, so I generally try to keep it um, to the back of the wave or so. Fortunately, the bats spotted us out. So instead, we're going to do a really obvious hey, we're pushing thing. And apparently, our PL is dead. Trying to keep all the creeps around so we could snipe this bird. This bat. I didn't do it. Wait. Alright, good. Somebody got it. Our push actually looks really scary here. We do have a lot of regular creeps, but even the double forge spirits on top of this gives us a lot of options. And we're going to put a sentry down so that we can spot on any enemies that are going to initiate. I don't think they have that many invis heroes or anything, but. There's a micrain on some of the creeps here. So, um, everything went kind of okay there. We did, looks like we did kill Undyne actually, so we did get at least one kill. Um, I suppose uh, something I haven't really done that I should probably talk about is um, exactly what all of Chen's skills do, and, and especially the neutral creeps. I guess that's a, a lot of the important information that you need to know when you play this hero, but... Basically, uh, Test of Faith is just a single target nuke. This I can send back allies that are in a lot of trouble, and what I've been doing a lot is being the focus of things, and I should be not the first person dying in a team fight. I should be like way in the back rather than getting jumped on like I did before. I burned all my heals basically to try to stay alive, and it wasn't enough. The creeps that I have, the Hellbear Smasher is a 150 magic damage AoE clap that does 25 movement and attack speed slow. So it's pretty good. You can do it three times. It, he's, uh, in the late game at least, he's by far one of the weakest ones though. Um, the Seder does 125 nuke at range. It's a little like orange blast. And the Centaur does a 25 damage AoE two seconds stun. So landing stuns with Centaurs are really big. Uh, the troll creeps are also very good. The, the big dark trolls, they have a ranged net that can go through magic immunity. Those are really good for disabling, um, even late game carries and ganking. The downside of the troll is that he doesn't have very much damage. He does piercing damage instead of chaos, um, which is like a Warcraft 3 thing. So basically he does less damage to, to a hero than uh, than regular creeps do, or the, the regular chaos creeps do at least. So. The visits dropped that down, so I decided to drop a sentry to see if he was going to come forward, and he didn't end up coming high ground, so. We go away. Um, None of those creeps are really useful for Chen to grab. This one has an AoE mana aura and a heal, as you guys can see. That's not really worth grabbing as a Chen, unless somebody's in a really a lot of trouble. But it's not worth it as Chen, because he needs his creeps to be one of the big guys, basically. And we got more Hellbear Smashers. It's been like all Hellbear Smashers this game. I've, I've played some games where you have like multiple tro Dark Trolls, and that, those games are really fun, actually. Just because uh, you can summon a lot of skeletons, and um, you can chain net somebody, and chain netting one carry is really useful, especually if it's like a life steal or something, because it goes through magic community. So dark trolls are really good. Plus, you can summon skeletons and push. Did I say that already? I don't remember. But we're gonna go push mid. We're, we feel pretty strong. Got the undying at the start, which is really good. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh. Putting my creeps on the tower, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'll be able to save my allies here. And I want to pull aggro off the the main hellbear, so I'll just go back. Oh yeah, one other cool thing: the uh, the centaur has a 15% attack speed aura. Another cool thing about him. 
The other aura creep that is good is the Elf Wolf. He does 30% damage aura, and also the Helber, or the, the Seder here, the guy that is the range nuke. He does a 3 HP regen per second aura, or I think it's 4 now actually. Yeah, it's 4 HP, it's really good. I waited for the boat to land so I could heal here. Landed a stun with my Centaur. Looks like we did actually lose the Hellbear. That's alright. I'm gonna send back the Invoker before I die. I did end up sending him back though. And the rest of my creeps all died. I was some micro in them. Fortunately, our PL dove a little too hard and he stayed too far. Or stayed too long. But at least I saved the Invoker, right, guys? Here's Invoker running back to the mid lane. Radiance top tower is under attack. It's me looking at the Invoker again. And now I'm respawning, so I'm gonna go get more creeps, because they all died. It's actually really unfortunate when all of your creeps die, it's not a good thing at all. Hey look guys, it's Invoker again. And we were like, hey, what's Invoker doing? And then we paused. Because we realized the Invoker was probably AFK. We realized the Invoker was here, and for some reason he made Ice Wall. And then he died. So basically what happened was, the Invoker thought that he died in the team fight. When in reality I saved him. I teleported him back to base right before he died. So he thought that I that he died, and then he must have right clicked up there while he was running away, which prompted the right click as soon as he got sent back basically. So what happened was, I saved him, and then he right clicked all the way back in their base, and then he alt tabbed. And he told us this, he alt tabbed. So he came back while he was in the, by their base, and he ends up dying again. Which is why people are laughing now. So I just typed LOL or something like that. So, really unfortunate. I've saved him and then uh, he ends up dying anyways. It's a pretty big team wave from us actually. Um, we did take the mid tower, but then we kind of realized that we hadn't even taken any of the tier 1's top. So, priority number 1 after Chen dies and all of your creeps dies, you have to go back in the jungle and you have to grab as many big creeps as possible because you need to have more utility. The hero by himself is not very good, but once you grab all these extra creeps, it gives you a lot of pushing power and tank and pretty okay right click against a few things. But most importantly is the disables. It's nice to have stuns and things. And even if I don't always micro perfectly, just landing a, a crucial stun on like an important tier like Troll, like I stunned Troll in the last fight or stunned him twice or something, is it's really nice. And the AoE heal is also very, very good. So I will send them towards the top lane. I'm going to shift on over, I think. Oh, that's right. I went to go push out the bot lane because I thought they said they wanted to push bot. And then they all kind of shifted top, so... Um, one thing you can do again to get your creeps somewhere really fast is smoke them all, so I maybe should have done that. In this case, as you guys can see, my teammates are all going towards top, but I think I saw all the creeps and I was like, oh man, I want all this free gold. And boy, did I get it. Range creeps are the best. So I purchased a point booster on the courier. Everybody is now pushing top. And my creeps can continue pushing bot. So I think the skill build is definitely the right one though. Um, you go Holy Persuasion, it's your fourth skill. Then you go two Tests of Faith, and then you max out Holy Persuasion. Then you finish Test of Faith, and then you get Penitence if the game isn't over and you haven't won yet. Um, if you don't know what Penitence does, it does a slow and uh, damage a boost on opponents. So it's kind of like Soul Catcher, but a single target. It's an okay skill, but it's definitely not worth maxing out over Test of Faith, just because Test of Faith makes ganking a lot easier. It really does. Um, throwing on extra nuke damage can sometimes be enough. Um, whereas Penitence is such a weak nuke, at best you could have like a 16% slow with two skill points, and it's just really not worth it at all. Unless you're comboing to somebody who has very, very reliable damage, it's much better to do a test of faith. People used to do a Penitence build so you could lead up into other disables, but nobody really uses it anymore. It's always test of faith. I'm looking for opportunities to go in here. That was a good ulti from Silencer. We were able to pick off the Kunko without too much. My creeps are still not here. So now I'm kind of just like right clicking on the, the tombstone. And there we go, we'll be a good now. So we basically won that team fight, not at all because of me, I did literally nothing. Um, Silencer had a great ulti and then they focused on the Kunkka who is probably the biggest game changer hero on their team right now. 
in peel, we got a bunch of lances off. Peel does what peel does best. So we can go push more now. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And again, we can go high ground. I actually did kind of want to push this, but the PL is going back mid. Um, I think the idea here was we got two easy towers, that's fine. But what we should really do is go push in the mid lane, because we already took the tower there. So, PL TP'd back mid, he's going to push the lane out, and everybody's going to show up. I'm queuing up an Aghanim Scepter next. Um, I kind of want to play Chen with Aghanims. Um, you'll see a bunch of all chat. I don't know what's going on here, but I talked to them a little bit. I have no idea who the heck he was talking about. But anyways, um, grabbing an Aghanim Scepter is really useful. It puts your ulti cooldown from between 120 to 104 seconds down to 30 seconds. So you can ulti every 30 seconds. It's a global heal that heals all of your um, allied heroes as well as um, all the creeps. All of your creeps will be full healed. Fully. Like, not even 300 HP. The, like, all, no matter how much they're missing. So it's really good for keeping your creeps alive if you're Roshanian or something like that. Or doing whatever. Sometimes it is actually important to blow it on the creeps because you could be pushing, for example. So... It's not bad to do it for that. Peel's still in their jungle a bit, and it looks like they might engage him, so we can do some slow pushing in the meantime, or we'll just push while he distracts them. Again, I'm not extremely happy with my creeps, but they're okay. I do have a stun creep, and this is why I'm going to put the, the centaur on the other side, because that way, if they do end up engaging this, then I'll have a stunner in position. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. He is in a bad spot. I was considering ulting for that, but once he got to about half HP, he just melted. Unfortunately, he didn't change lanes like we wanted him to. We shift towards the uh, we shifted towards the middle lane because um, the towers weren't there, so that's why we decided to change. I don't know if he was actually talking about Venomancer. I think he was actually talking about somebody who. Hydra is. If you, if you don't know what that means, um, in Dota 1, the Venomancer model was actually a Hydralisk. It was a Warcraft 3 Hydralisk model. I believe there was a Marine model and a Hydralisk model, and um, the only one that actually looked anything like Dota was actually uh, the Hydralisk. So it was a Venomancer. Venomancer was, uh, was a Hydralisk in Dota 1. Fun fact. That's what he was talking about. So I said, okay, whatever, guys. Let's just like Roshan or something. Because I have three creeps, and they're pretty strong, and they can tank. And then it'll be all good, but then we noticed the birds were there, so they knew that we were Roshani, and so we said, alright, whatever, just go fight. So now we're going to try to kill people. So, for now, I guess they decided to go back in. The whale. little creeps. I think I was microing creeps here. Doesn't look like I was doing anything, but I swear to god I was doing stuff, guys. Like, it's it's so hard to, like, look at everybody's HP while trying to control other things individually. Micro is not an easy thing. Fortunately, the, uh... Kunkka here came back in this. And now my centaur starts to chase. One little centaur. Centaur! It did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. Literally wasted my time, my crane, just now. <laughs> anyways, he can go run back to base. Or... I think I left him to CS. I think, since I was not spawned anyways. I don't know if I did a very good job uh, disabling in that fight. I think I got flustered that one too, but I did right-click the troll while his BKB was up, so that was okay. And of course I popped mech and heal. Maybe I should have popped mech first next time and then go heal afterwards. Reason for that being that um, the mech is really just used to get their HP up, but if I use the, the ulti later it'll full heal the creeps rather than just like burst heal them, for example. I think in the future I'll just make sure that I do the other, the other way around. Oh, 
I don't know who he's talking about. Maybe it's one of his friends or something. But maybe there was a case where somebody said, let's team matchmake, and then they grabbed a bunch of random people from wherever, and then we did a team matchmaking game or something. But I, I don't know who he was talking about. Maybe I have played with him, but I don't remember. So back in the jungle, pretty much the same creeps that I'm getting. Um, actually, I'll have two centaurs now, which is great. You can do chain stunning, so you can stun for up to four seconds. And of course I bought some smoke, and needless to say I'm never going to use it. So that's how I roll. I think I might have used it now-ish, I can't remember. Damn, I did use a smoke. Just when I said it wasn't going to happen. I mean, Ninja and Roshan, what is going on? As one dead hero. And I got the stun off of the centaur, so we are able to pick off the troll. He popped BKB a little bit late and I was able to stun him, so unfortunate for him. So dead troll, dead visage means that uh, we should be able to take Rashawn because they're dead for 30 seconds. We could actually also push off of this. Maybe it's not worth it.